everybody. Welcome to Kame House Party. I'm Aaron. And I'm Vince. It's a podcast where we attempt to watch every single episode of Dragon Ball that has ever existed or will exist, and then we get together to talk about it. In a comedic fashion, there is improv, there are bits, there are tangents, diversions, there are hot takes, cold analysis, (laughs) tempered discussions, (laughs) scolding, comedy. Ooh. All the temperatures are represented today. Equal temp rep. <laughs> e temp rep. E temp rep. It's our. It's a new slogan. All temperatures represented. Before we turn up the heat, we gotta put the brakes on a little bit because before a party, you gotta prepare. In a little segment we call Kame Housekeeping, which contains multiple segments, <laughs> and the first multiple segment is the world famous one minute roundup. Now, I've been tolerant of all your advances, Betty Lou, but this one takes the cake. What? I'm just, I just ripped your clothes off with this here machete. Now, not only was that some impressive knife work, but... Slice, slice, slice. Oh, <laughs> okay. There go your shoes. No, I, and I, I need... feet. And I need those as sheriff. The shoes are the most commanding part of my mm. job, my spurs. They are immaculate, and they give me authority. Now I can't, I can't govern the people of this here town. But look at those smooth heels. Do you, do you get the pedicure down? I, I use at, a at Sammy's. I, I go down to Sammy's. I don't get a pedicure, but I do get one of those uh, newfangled pumice stones. Look, self care is very important. Slice, slice, slice. No more underpants. Oh my good. Okay. I guess you have no choice but to. Uh, Take me out. I don't know how you expected this to work. That I would, that you would get me in my mm-hmm. skivvies, in my yes. birthday suit, and then yep. you're <laughs> covering it up with your ten gallon hat. That's right. And don't you dare, don't you dare slice up this mm-hmm. ten gallon hat. My grandpa gave me this ten gallon hat, and he he got it from someone he called father. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. uh. And scene. So the one minute roundup starts with an improvised Western scene to loosen and stretch our improvisational muscles. And the one minute roundup proper is when one of us, this time Vince, has to sum up everything that has happened in Dragon Ball thus far. That is, as of now, 131 episodes of Dragon Ball. Good and Lord. We, yes, it is. I mean, that's more episodes than 130. <laughs> this is true. That's for, that's for certain. Aaron, uh, you, I didn't know you were a math whiz. Mm, I mean, stereotypes with Asians and all that. <laughs> so we do this for two reasons. One, because it's an interesting challenge. And it's fun to see us sweat through uh, th- this monumental task. And two, so you don't, you, the listener, maybe you're new. Maybe you stumbled upon, you bumped into this podcast on the street. You said, pardon me, but then you turned around, your eyes locked, and, ooh, you're very interested in this podcast. What could it be about? Well, guess what? You don't have to start at episode one, buddy, or girly, or person-y. You can just uh, (laughs) listen to the new episode, and we'll catch up on what's going on. You don't even have to watch Dragon Ball to, to enjoy this, but you can. You can go watch Dragon Ball. You should. Why not? Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. You cowards. Name five reasons. Yeah. If Name you can 13 get... reasons why. Oh, no. Don't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that show is like metaphorically canceled and also really canceled yeah. because yeah. of some of the themes that they were glorifying. Not good. Not good. <laughs> not good at all. <laughs> yeah. So just watch Dragon Ball. Instead. instead yeah. <laughs> Dragon the Ball. The one reason to watch Dragon Ball is because of 13 reasons, reasons why. why. <laughs> So anyway, look, Uh, but you don't have to because Vince is about to lay some knowledge on you, a nice base of information so we can continue on with the jokes and jests. Vincent, are you ready? As always, Aaron, I'm not ready, but I'll do this for the fans. Mm -hmm. Here I go. Summarizing everything in Dragon Ball in 60 seconds, starting now. 
A uh, long time ago, Seven Magic Dragon Balls were created by Kami and Mr. Popo uh, to help the people of Earth. Um, but those Dragon Balls also had the power to corrupt. And that's where Goku and Bulma show up. Bulma looking for the Dragon Balls so she can make a boyfriend for herself. And Goku just wanted to go on an adventure. They stopped a little goblin named Emperor Pilaf who wanted to use the Dragon Balls for evil purposes. Then Goku... Uh, went off and he trained with Master Roshi and then he fought the Red Ribbon Army and he met a little green fox and Goku beat the Red Ribbon Army all by himself uh, thwarting their plans to use the Dragon Balls and then Goku trained for more more years until he, he came upon Tien Shinhan out in the world they became rivals and they fought in the second Tenkaichi tournament where Goku came in second place but only barely then Goku was like oh my friend Krillin's been killed by King Piccolo's minions and then uh, Goku fought King Piccolo and all his minions, and he won. Uh, and then King Piccolo did, spat out an egg, and now Goku's trading with Mr. Popo and Kami to stop Piccolo. Oh, 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 God. That, still, you didn't get those last few words in. I didn't get those last few words in. Man, that was very composed. You didn't write it down, did you? No. You didn't prepare ahead of time. I prepared mm-hmm. Nothing. I'm going to be like those jerks at improv shows that say, this has got to be scripted, right? Oh, there's no way they're just making it up. There's no way they could. They, they found a way to tie in a, a chicken's leg and uh, Ty Burrell. There's no way. There's no way. They're certainly not the result of hours and hours of practice and learning forms and things to in honing your muscle, your brain muscle memory. It's it's written. It's written. And, and then they memorized all the lines for you know to, to a twenty fool minute us. show. Yeah. Yes, cowards. I believe, but Vince, I just want to say I believe you. Hey, and look, I believe, believe improvisers. I believe you, and I believe it. Gotta believe it. Sounds so, so then, familiar. <laughs> eh, it's a little familiar. A little bit. So the next part of Kami Housekeeping is letting you good folks know that Vince and I watched two different versions of the episode. I watched the English subtitled version, and Vince watches the English dubbed version. And we do this because we did it in the first episode by mistake, and we said, there are no mistakes. <laughs> Only happy accidents. <laughs> and so that we're still keeping this tradition alive. And the other reason is because there, it, it gives us a lot of things to compare and contrast because there are usually differences in the episodes based on what they translate, what they don't translate, what they leave out, what they surprisingly keep in. Uh, and the first difference is usually the title. And Vince, I am... Please go first. Oh, boy. Because I... Th- well, I have a... Just go first, please. Okay. We'll see what happens. After winning the coin toss, Aaron (laughs) decides to defer. (laughs) So here I go. Episode 132 of Dragon Ball. Hotter than lava. Uh, (laughs) I'm just going to go with mine. Okay. Episode 132 of Dragon Ball. Hotter (gasps) than (gasps) magma. No! do that to us <laughs> now vince is knowing much like vader did after being burned by lava or magma uh when the episode title of both versions match we call that a yahtzee and we were very close to a yahtzee and so that's heartbreaking. close and if i can let me get this out of the way because it annoyed me i'm usually not pedantic i'm i roll with like minor inaccuracies i don't care too much but this drove me insane because everyone in my episode kept saying magma they kept calling it magma guys (sighs) if it's on the earth's surface it's lava and that is science that is science and that is fresh off the dome that is no knowledge because Aaron and i we don't do research and i think we both have that specific piece of geological knowledge that magma is below the Earth's surface. Any molten rock below the Earth's surface is magma. Once it breaches the Earth's crust, it becomes Mm -hmm. lava. And if you tell us anything different, we will come to your house and show you. We will show you what 
We will bring yeah. lava to you. We will take you to fifth grade science class. Mm-hmm. We will we do will the vinegar you. and baking soda experiment. <laughs> we'll tell you that there are nine planets and not eight planets in a planetoid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which sounds like a pretty cool ska band. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like a pretty, pretty school ska band. School ska band. School ska band. Uh, I will unearth my Mount St. Helens project from seventh grade. Oh, damn. And show you. Oh, you were obsessed with that too? How a mountain just exploded? Ah, oh, it was crazy. It was. Cr- they showed us the video, and I was like, this happened in my parents' lifetime? On American soil? On American soil? This wasn't a movie? Two years. <sighs> yeah, I'll give it away. Two give it away, ye- give it away, give it away now. <laughs> I was obsessed with Mount St. Helens because for the longest time, I thought it happened when I was born. <gasps> Because it's the same date, but then I realized that it was two years before. But it is the same date. That's pretty as cool. It's my though. birth date. So I'm like, yeah, I'm special as fuck. I was. <laughs> they announced my birth <laughs> two years prior. <laughs> if you look at the ash, it spells out in two years. Two years. He shall be born. <laughs> if you look at the pattern of the trees that fall, they point to where Aaron was born. It also makes the little ring with uh, the OK sign because uh-huh. it, it gotcha. Gotcha. It was below the. It was, it was below below the, the waist. waist. Yeah, it, so you get, counts. So then you get punched in the shoulder. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so look, speaking of punching, we got a. There's lava, not magma involved in this episode. There's a ton of it, and let's get to the action of the show. Mm-hmm. Previously on Dragon Ball. Uh, a volcano blew up in a village. And that's that's kind all of what we're that's kinda all you need to know. <laughs> There's a lot of destruction footage. It's like Roland Emmerich directed this battle. I was gonna say, we linger on that opening shot of just the volcano spewing mag- lava. <laughs> spewing mm-hmm. lava oh, into the air. Got they almost get I, they almost got me. <laughs> you, you, you fools almost got me. I won't be tricked. Um but it's just over and over again. And we see they recycled some shots when the lava is going into the forest and it's burning down the trees. Uh, Just a little too long for me. But, you know, they're they're setting up that this is a big problem that the boys are going to have to solve. That lava, that is the fastest lava I've ever seen. It is. In my life. It is speedy. It's faster than those levels on platformers where there's like a wave behind you. And oh, don't just, get me started. Uh, Auto scrolling yeah. levels on platformers. They can go straight to heck. <laughs> I'm getting anxiety about it. All you Mario Maker fans. Oh, now that you have the power to change the course. Like they now Mario Maker for Switch, you can actually like direct the auto scrolling into whatever angle and trajectory what? you want. Oh yeah. Mario Maker is about to become hell on earth. <laughs> All these complicated levels and stuff. I'm not I'm not going to participate. It's Mario Maker is like the last Starfighter. It's just a recruitment method for hell. Mhm. See, I knew it. Nintendo is just trying to get us all to make hell on earth. You're great. You're great at torturing people. Come come be a devil with us. Why won't you? <laughs> exactly. You're recruited. Ugh. But, you're great. You're great at being a piece of shit. <laughs> hey, do you have fun annoying your friends by giving them specific challenges you know they can't meet or beat? Is your advice always get good? <laughs> do you have get good tattooed on your neck or any part of your body? Then do we have the game for you? Do you unironically like gamer fuel? <laughs> I'm Doug Bowser. That's right, Doug. Bowser, new head of Nintendo America, and I'm going to fuck everybody over by giving the people the tools to bother each other in Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch. The end, yeah. The end. That's it. So we get the villagers running away. Grandpa still praying to the god of the mountain. He thinks that's the only way to solve it. Uh, Mint in Paru. Uh, trying to get him to leave. Uh, Paru's like, those guys are crazy. What can they do to stop lava? Even though he doesn't say lava in my 
<laughs> yeah, it's pretty similar on my end. I think I forgot in the last episode to mention that Mint never calls the village elder grandpa. She only calls him village elder. So there's no Why There's no connection there for some reason. That? I look, I'm not sure. Maybe it would lessen the blow when this old man's stubbornness got him liquefied and hot lava by continuing to use his thoughts and prayers to stop yeah. it. <laughs> when he when he slowly falls down into the vat and then gives a thumbs up to uh-huh. the skeleton hand. Yeah. Way to go, God. <laughs> Way to this go, is what Mountain you God. Your will be done. <laughs> but that's that's where they're at. Yep. Cut to the mountain. The boys are running. And I, I only talk about this because I want to bring up what they said. Because they're dummies. <laughs> so the boys, they're running up the mountain. Chiaotzu, being sensible, is like, uh, what's the plan, guys? It's, yeah, I get it. We're strong, but it's fucking lava. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like each one of them, mainly Tian, is like, this is just a great opportunity to test my strength. And Yamcha's like, me too. And Krillin says, me as well. Yeah. No one has a plan. That's all. I just want to bring that up that they don't know how to do this. Yeah, they they do. They pretty, they're pretty foolhardy and just want to show off their strength. And it, I mean, we'll talk about this later. Uh, the level of participation from certain members of the team. <laughs> but like, they're dicks. At this point in time, I'm like, well, you guys are kind of assholes, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You're not. For the most part, you're not concerned with the village too much Look, because of your hubris. Tien in mine is a little bit more. I don't know if the if the lines change, but Tien is like, we have to save the village. Like he's he's very much like, look, we're not going anywhere. We have to try to save the village. It's also a great way to test our might and put mm. our training to the test. It, it, Lee, I'll give that to you, English version. You at least made them more human more heroic maybe yeah also yeah, 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 yeah. now we get uh a cut to the lookout goku's still undergoing his hide and seek training he's got the blindfold on this time and is just blindly fumbling around not able to even get close feeling or seeing mr popo's spirit energy and all the while popo is like kind of just like sliding in and out of frame. <laughs> and I, I really like that image of Popo being like, you're not focusing. And he's like, <laughs> try I'm, harder, Goku. I'm over here. Stop trying to find me and focus. And Goku is just <laughs> woefully incompetent. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Exactly. And then Popo gives him some words of advice. And Popo tells him that, um, of course you can't find my energy until you understand and, uh, Learn about your own spirit energy. I'm like, ah, of course. <laughs> he, a little different, he just explains to Goku that if you expand your key, then you don't need eyes to see. Damn. Goku, baby. Snaps. Scootly, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. Love to see Popo at a spoken word event. <laughs> I call this one. Goku fail. <laughs> he punches the air, but cannot see that the only one who punches is me. He can't see key he needs. Failure, not an option. For Piccolo Jr. <laughs> will thwomp him. Three years. Is it enough? Time flies in the room of time. Don't be punching without your key. Open the lock and you will see. Thank you. Wow. Next, we got a new poet coming up. Uh, Yajirobe. Take it away, man. Hungry. Beans. (laughs) Things that I've seen. Monsters. (laughs) Monsters. <laughs> Crunchy. Swords be sharpened. Corin lies and makes me starving. Right on a cloud. In a cloud of doubt. Goku! My friend. 
until the end. My tama is tight. My hair is long. Won't be short. Hit this bong. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and see. And I only insane because Vince, that was like, that was legitimately good. <laughs> I, <feel. laughs> I was like, I was really feeling that Yajirobe spoken word. Man, look, it's just the hidden talents of Yajirobe. I can't believe we haven't, like, why haven't we got, we used to get more cutaways to him and Corrin having, like, weird I know. beef. where's that at? Where's that stuff? Instead of these, like, again, I I hate that they're afraid to not put Goku in an episode at this point. Yeah, these past two, they're like, eh, we don't need to see Goku, do we? And then somebody comes in, yeah, no, the people, they want to see Goku, put him in. But we're not developing anymore he's not learning anything it's like the same gag we've been hey. doing for like these past episodes hey do you want to mm-hmm. get fired no then put goku I in like there money. i don't care if it's a 10 second clip or not okay do we have to animate it can it just be like a still do whatever you need to do what if just yamcha thinks i wonder what goku's doing now are you talking about like a thought bubble uh maybe yeah and then we, you know, he has a thought bubble. And no, it's just old, no, old no, clips. no, no. We need a, we need a just full cycle animation. <sighs> you know what? I didn't want to have to do this, but you're fired, Ted. What? You're, yeah, nope. You're fired. You got too I many just, ideas. I was, tr- I was. <laughs> Wait, you're firing me as a writer because I have too many ideas. Yeah, you got too many ideas. Upper management, they don't like it anymore. So you're saying that you're just going to show Goku being strong, then meeting someone who's stronger than him, then showing him train, and then showing him beat that person who used to be stronger than him over and over again? Yes. Oh. Sorry that Without I... Without any I, further character development? No, Not yet, no. Sorry that I, I, I'm not allowed contractually to step foot in the writer's bullpen. So I'm just I was wondering screaming. why you were just yelling at us. I think it helps with morale. It doesn't, but well, that's for that's for me to find out later in my performance review, <laughs> and for you to put into your exit interview. So pack up your stuff. Oh, I guess I'll just put away this story of this uh, this book of Plato. Oh. I forget the title of it. It wore. I, I've read it so much studying about story structure that the title wore off, and I forgot it. Uh, I'll get rid of Story by Robert McKee. I'll get rid of the Sidfield book. Sigh uh, loudly. Should I leave this copy of Save the Cat or uh... sigh again loudly? All right. You. Will... <laughs> I got a bunch of video clips of Dan Harmon oh, I, talking I'll, about I'll, story I'll... structure. You want to leave those? Can or... I have those? Yeah, I'll send you the links. Great. All right. Well, bye. <sighs> Off to the streets, I guess. Best of luck. <laughs> and, and see. Oh, a little peek behind the curtain. Writer's yeah, rooms are savage. Oof. Don't trust a producer. Mm-mm. They're not your friends. Much like an earthquake is not your friend. Oh, because... thank goodness we're talking about this. <laughs> That's what happened. So, oh, okay. So, an earthquake hits. Yamcha, Krillin are like, oh, God, this is horrible. Tien and Chaozu are floating. Oh, and Tien, God. savage as hell. Mm-hmm. Oh, is it? Uh, is the earthquake that bad? We wouldn't know. Oh, so savage. Essentially. Equally savage in mine. He goes, I don't know. It's pretty good up here. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then those pixelated sunglasses like slide down <laughs> under their eyes. And then doobies in their mouths. And then Thug Life slides in. <laughs> Uh, so you're saying I gotta make that now, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> uh, um, more work. Yeah, that happens. There's a there's the earthquake. There's a, a fissure opens up. Krillin is falling in, and all the while this is like beautifully animated. Like I really like the animation in a lot of these Actually, yeah, it is. scenes. Um, it's very like it's very early Z like hard lines and exaggerated movements and exaggerated faces and 
it looks like they really took their time on a lot of this, which I really appreciated. And, you know, Krillin's falling into this crevice and then he's saved by Chaozu. The four of them are, you know, they're regrouping after not doing anything. <laughs> And uh, I don't. Does Tien make a comment to Krillin? He goes, Krill, he, he says, Krillin, you really need to work on your flying technique. Like you really should put some time into it. Like, because that's I, a that's a dick thing to say. It but is. Like, no, his is much nicer. He's like, Hey, Krillin and Yamcha, I think it's about time you learn the fly. We teach you the flying technique. Oh, see, that's nicer. Yeah, they're 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 taking my advice from a few episodes back. Yeah, why doesn't Tien teach everybody how to fly? Yeah. Since they're all friends now. Yeah, aren't you? That's what I don't know. That's what I don't know. Well, they won't they be mm-hmm. friends. Grandpa, still being dumb. God, he won't leave. That's it. That's it for that scene. That's it for that scene. We, just to remind you that he is still waiting. I did have a question, though. All right. Because they do like a slow pan of the empty village, and there's a house that has Tago house on it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what Tago means? I do not, but I'm sure some plucky fan out there knows. I hope somebody who's listening is willing to do the research that we refuse to do and will tell me what Tago house is, either on Instagram, Twitter, or through at gmail.com. Just send it on in, and we'll read it on air, because we don't do research. Sure don't. We don't have and time. We, we have to... <laughs> Look, we have to prepare for the podcast by like watching the episode. Yeah. And then waking up. Yeah, we do a lot of I I, I don't know about sitting. Aaron. Yeah, we do a lot of sitting, which requires us to do a lot of stretching beforehand. Gotta gotta make sure that your body is prepared to sit and speak. There's a podcast coach that we meet with three times a week. We go over film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gives us replays from last week. Mostly posture critiques. Yeah. And projection. Mm-hmm. I'm always getting... getting yeah. Uh, diet recommendations so we don't smack my lips as much. Mm-hmm. All, all really helpful. All very expensive. Yeah. Ugh, so, so expensive. We burn our budget mostly on the coach. Mm-hmm. It's Mike Krzyzewski. And, and that's... Yeah. You want to be the best? You got to hire the best. Got to hire the best. Man's won more college ch- NCAA... <laughs> Men's college <laughs> championships than any other coach in history. And don't think that doesn't transfer over to podcast coaching. You'd think. I mean, we tried Bobby Knight, but he kept throwing my furniture around, and I yeah. was like, get out of here, Bobby Knight. I mean, we do have to work on the sled, but that's just, I mean, that again, good for posture. It's all for posture. Get a strong back. You can sit and do a podcast forever. Suicides I'm not crazy about, though. That's my least favorite. I asked him why we had to do suicides. You know what he said? He didn't want to say this to you. He oh, said it to me. Ugh. I know. It was weird. I was like, what is this, some kind of mind game? And he said, yes. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I'm down with it then. <laughs> yeah. it was all. He just wanted to tell me that he was playing a mind game on you to get you to work a little bit harder. And I it, mean, it worked. It worked. It super worked. And I appreciate it after the fact. Mm-hmm. That's how all good coaches are. Manipulative. <laughs> but for a reason. <laughs> yes. For, for the greater good, they will manipulate <laughs> the hell out of you. Look, before we think about it too hard, it gets sad. Uh, Krillin, he, they're like, all right, let's 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 face this lava head on. Krillin runs up. He's like, I'm first. Tries to come. He's going to shoot a Kamehameha at the lava for a reason. Yeah. Inner, inner monologue. I wish I could have shown off to Mint. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're finding Krillin's motivation is a little bit mm-hmm. closer to his masters than anybody else. Yeah, we've look. He said this day one. Don't don't get it twisted. He's oh. a good dude, but we knew who Krillin. It's like the scorpion and the frog. We knew who Krillin was. <laughs> He's gonna sting us with his, his with his uh, lust his desire. Yeah. yeah, his lust over the ladies. So Vince, what what did you think was gonna happen when he tried to shoot energy at lava? I, I thought nothing because well, that's what I thought was gonna happen. I was hoping that Krillin was going to really impress us here with his Kamehameha wave. And, um, you know, kind of, sp- I thought the lava would split and they'd be all like, yay, Krillin did it. And then it'd just be going around them now. And then I was like, oh, this was far funnier is that Krillin's Kamehameha wave 
literally did nothing. It made a big lava splash, and we got that cool little lava rain, which I, I found fun. But that was about it. Yeah, yeah that's it. Tian's like, now it's my turn. He does that dodon pa mm-hmm. to the mountain, creates a bunch of rubble. It's like, that should stop it. Oh, fuck, it doesn't. It just <laughs> split it in two. So now there are two different lava flows we have to deal with. Oh, boy. Again, it's- though, the animation on all of this is stellar. <laughs> Tian's facial animations and um, the animation on the dodon ray is really cool. Yeah, but it's at the same time, it's you... You fucking goobers. You're not, you can't karate your way out of everything. Are you sure about that, Aaron? I mean, eventually they can, but that's what I want to yell at them. I am, I am actually a little genuinely mad that, look, they're successful at the end, guys. Um, But I'm a little mad about it. (laughs) Just because, like, no, (laughs) you can't. You can't just karate your problems. Because it, it, cause you're right. It doesn't, it, it takes a long time for it to get better, like for them to figure it out. But they, but it gets far worse every time. Yeah. Yam, uh, and Yamcha is actually, this, I'm actually rooting for Yamcha in this because he's, okay, let me actually think for a second figure out what the deal is Mm -hmm. he says if only it would rain then he spots a waterfall he's like I've got an idea and he hops away yep but he doesn't tell anybody what his idea is yeah you think he'd be like Chao Tzu come with me you're not doing anything again this is what I wanted to talk about all right let's let's get into it then why has Chao Tzu done nothing he has the power of telekinesis hopefully his training will allow him to I don't know, lift heavy objects to put in the way of the fire or move trees out of the way or something. So as we saw in the Tenkaichi tournament, Chiaotzu is not a punchy boy. Right. If he can avoid it. I don't think he's going to enter the next tournament, man. He has to, right? Does he? I want him to. Fine, I'll say it. I, <laughs> I want to see what happens. Which I want to see the the result of Chaozu's training, if any. Well, I mean, he can move real fast. He can run real fast now. That's what yeah. we we learned. I mean, uh, that's true. Because, like, I mean, at a, at a eventually he just floats around everywhere. Yeah, which is this unsettling. <laughs> If when you think about it, a small child is just, just floating. Mm-hmm. I don't want my kid to float everywhere. <laughs> Could you imagine how hard it would be to parent <sighs> a child that can float? Get back! Oh, I'm gonna get my belt. Oh, you've you uh, you're, you're up miles there. away from me now. In the sky. <sighs> Great. <laughs> give give that child a balloon. They and the balloon start floating away. Yeah, I have to wear. I have to. Yeah. God, got to put a fifty pound weight on my kid to keep. Keep him oh, in line. he's incredibly strong. Crap. C- great. I let him train with his creepy, perverted turtle grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> he, it, when grandpa says he'll take the kid for the summer, uh, you don't, you don't look at that gift horse in the mouth. No, are you kidding me? Getting your summer back? Oh, get that kid out of here. Get him away. So I can watch R-rated movies on TV. I can go around pantsless again, as is my want. Donald Duckin all summer. <laughs> that really like that is the ultimate summer look right <laughs> just donald ducking it eating a popsicle <laughs> oh no one of those freezy pops that you squeeze yeah. out oh the simple that's, pleasures that's living baby that is life that's all i can think about now oh. Aaron, i gotta go <laughs> <laughs> yeah summer starts now <laughs> we're out <laughs> we're out of here <clears throat> you're right chow Tzu could easily telekinesis something together. Yeah. Then this is just a thought. I I just had this thought now. Maybe he's just like, I don't want to show up, Tien. He's so excited about being a strong boy. Maybe that's it. And maybe he's just, I'll just be clutch. I'll just be in the pocket. At, you know, point of no return, Mm -hmm. I'll pull out the telekinese. Put a bubble over everyone. Call it good. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a Chiaotzu force field bubble that's crackling with electrical energy as the magma is swarming around them. I can't hold it much longer. Tien! 
Uh, guess I should just explode, right? <laughs> At this moment? Jiaozu, no! No, I'm pretty, like, uh, but I really want to explode. It seems like the thing I'm good at and known for. Jiaozu, don't! There's still so much training we have to do. Goodbye! Oh, the lava's gone. Okay, never mind. <sighs> it passed. Oh, thank God. <sighs> well, I guess I'll explode another day. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and, and scene. scene. Shout to, he just loves blowing up. It's. Uh, <laughs> 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 mm, mm. Look, I don't want to be. It's a kind of explosion for him, is all I'll say. Oh. Mm. And we'll leave you that. We'll leave you with that thought during this commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> Hey, you cool cats and kittens. Are you looking for a place to express yourself through the English language in front of a microphone? And where maybe you're bad at rhymes. Well, don't worry about it. Just come to Mr. Popo's Spoken Word Night down at the Kame Club. That's right. Come on down to Popo's Spoken Word Night at the Kame Club on do, South do, Fist and Varick. Popo's Spoken do, Word do, is open to anyone who wants to enhance their spiritual energy and perception and also wants to speak truth to power in the form of spoken word. <laughs> it's me, Oolong. Here, here's my words. Panties. Let me see them, please. <laughs> This isn't this isn't poetry. Like women in the audience, please. If you just up, I'm getting out. Bottles, candles, a gun. I'm out of here. Bup, 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 bup. Oh, it's me, Turtle, here to tell you about my spoken word experience <laughs> at the at the Kame Club. <laughs> Slow, plotting, rewarding, fun. Turtle. All Giant of the hook comes out. <laughs> mm? <Yeah>. No. <laughs> All of these. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we have someone who wanted to step up to the plate? Oh, it's and just give us me, a... Roshi. Uh, hey, I got one about Panny. Oh shit. Oh Ow. no no ah. no. Ah. The Kame Club is a house of learning and expression, and it should not be used to throw perverted ideals out. For example... Hey, you cool cats, it's me, Corin. You better let a real cat show you how to dig on this. Yes, Master Corin here to give us an example of what great spoken word at the Kame Club on South Fifth and Varric is like. Take it away, Master Corin. All right, here, let me just meow, 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 purr, uh, purr, uh, groove myself. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you ever do, notice do, how, like, Yajirobe, do, do, he eats beans do. like this? Om um, nom 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 nom. But me, Corin, I eat beans like this. Um, you ever, you ever notice that? That's crazy, right? Uh, what else? Uh, I'm single. Uh, I live up, but I but I have a huge house. Master Corin. Mm-hmm, yes. This is more of your five-minute stand-up set than... Technically true. still words that are spoken. A master's never wrong. Continue. Uh, well, that was my time. Bye. So, now that you've seen some of the acts we have at the Kame... Club, come on down. Sign up ahead of time to get a time slot. Wednesdays, Fridays, Sundays, and Tuesdays at the Kame Club, hosted by yours truly, Mr. Popo. Two drink minimum. Anyone under 21 cannot be admitted unless you're cool. You're cool, right? <laughs> Wear your gi and get in free. <laughs> So Krillin, he he understands that everything be crazy. So he runs back to the village to look for Minch Hand, finds him. Uh, he sees, you know, the grandpa, 
Paru, uh, all of them praying. Krillin's like, look, man, you can't, you should leave. The, the lava's coming down too fast. And then Paru shuts him up and says, quote, as an outsider, you have no right to judge us. Leave us alone. Yeah, Paru had a had a couple of um, attitude changes throughout this episode. Like, in the second half, he starts off being like, outsiders, you didn't do, like, get out of here. You don't understand us. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to help you, dude. But I, at the same time, I understand it. If you want to change someone's mind, you don't start off by telling them they are wrong. This is true. That it, yeah, that just leads to the current state of affairs. <laughs> um, so I, I can get why he would have an attitude over this little shrimp who's tr- who's just trying to get with your sister. That's true. He sees it. Krillin, he doesn't even in mind. He doesn't even mention uh, the elder or Paru when he gets down there and finds them. He's just like, Mint, we gotta go. The lava's coming. You gotta get out of here, Mint. And I'm like, Krillin, there are two other people there. Yeah. Think just drop your fa- you don't need your family. <laughs> you got just, me, just Krillin. <laughs> yeah. I'll never l- yeah, yeah, we'll, see. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll Let's, see. We'll uh, see. You know, we just met, so let's let's kill your family, then we'll see where things go from there. But leave them. Uh and while Krillin is trying to convince the love of his life <laughs> to leave it, her family, um Yamcha has made it to the waterfall to try to get uh, to try to, you know, execute his plan. Tien mm-hmm. kind of gets it. He's like, ah, yes, using uh, the elements against themselves. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's not a bad line. It's not a bad line. Um, and Yamcha, a lot of Kamehameha's right now, because Yamcha powers up, uses a Kamehameha wave to blast a hole in the rock to send some water down, and it's only a trickle. And I was like, it's just as Yamcha as ever. <laughs> just a little well, he, he, he gets mad in mine he gets mad at himself he's like oh Goku would have done it in one shot it would have been bigger and all the girls would have liked it more and, uh... <laughs> and he would have he would have got a movie deal and a Nike sneaker contract and, and, and oh. then a bald eagle would have flew down and said nice and high fived him afterwards and then he would have gotten the medal of honor and knighted by the queen oh man Goku's the best <laughs> uh, and then dog president would have Sat on it, like spun around in three, in a circle three times. Sat on his lap and said, "Pet, scritch my ears." And he would have got to pet the dog president. But me, Yamcha, take me two Kabeamea waves. Uh, um, but yeah, poor, poor he's, Yamcha. Yeah, he's real down on himself. I'm sorry, Yamcha. <laughs> all that <laughs> training, all that training, and they're all so excited to use it, and then they <laughs> they prove themselves to be yeah. almost inept. Yeah, Tien, uh, he just dote on pause until he makes a fissure for the lava to fall in, but it's not deep enough. Yep. Or the lava's moving too fast to be affected by it. Maybe I missed something, but there is a point where Krillin, still down with the villagers, still down in the village, Mm -hmm. moves a giant boulder for no reason? That's, yeah, okay. Right? I'm glad we bring this up. Again, this was almost Krillin just showing off for no reason because he's trying to do anything he can to stop the lava flow, but there's no lava in that area, and he does. He just moves a boulder, and it's just kind of, um, I think it was more of a visual reference to how strong he's gotten because when he was younger and you know training with Goku, moving that boulder was a lot harder for him or mm-hmm. something like that. But it, it, it was dumb. It was just dumb. Yeah, it's not like the boulder was about to fall on anyone. He just shoved it off the edge. Mint's like, wow, you're so strong. You're Segoy. You're so amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, saying the three Japanese words I know. Yeah. Uh, and then Krillin just hand on hand back of his head like, yeah, it was nothing. Yeah. And while Yamcha, uh, you know, sends a second Kamehameha wave, the water, it, and maybe I'm jumping the gun. No, that's you're good. Yeah, he he does another Kamehameha wave, flooding the forest, causing irreparable damage. Yeah, I thought it was actually worse. And the way that they they positioned, like the way that they kind of showed it, 
it didn't seem like it was going anywhere near the lava. And I was like, I hope, because I, I was like, oh man, I'm hoping this becomes just a comedy of errors that they have to correct, where Yamcha creates a flood that is now threatening the village. So there's lava and a flood, and the villagers are getting pissed at them again. Yeah. I do like Shazam, the movie Shazam did this a little bit where it's, I'm a superhero, but I'm still a dummy. <laughs> I don't know how to actually help, and I'm just making things worse. Yeah. Because that's what it kind of felt like. It was like they were just going to keep fumbling until they lucked into a solution. Yeah. That is fun, but it sucks for these guys sometimes. Yeah. But, but that's not really what we get with the water. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the water ends up cooling the lava and saving the village for the moment. <laughs> Yeah, everyone, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's fine for right now. The old man, Grandpa still thinks that the mountain god who did it and Paru is also on that side. Quote, all you did was make some noise in reference to the Dragon Ball boys and their efforts. Really? Yeah. Mine Paru is a little bit more cutting okay. when Krillin is like, we did it, we, we saved the village. And then he's like, you can't take credit for what the mountain god did for us. It's like you outsiders just ran and hid in the woods and did nothing. Don't take credit for something you didn't do. And I was like, whoa, Paru, my man, chill out. Like, you saw Krillin move that rock? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, why would they hide in the woods closer to the danger? Exactly. I, I don't know. It, it was a weird thing. And I, I, I never, like... Um, those kind of tropes where, like, the village is praying to a god, somebody else actually saves them, and then the village still refuses to uh, acknowledge the help that they receive from another human being. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Because in my mind, that could also be the will of the god that you're praying to. That's what I thought they were going to get to at some... They don't in this episode. But no. I thought they were going to get to that, like, ah, oh, thank goodness the mountain god sent you to us. Right. I'm like that's a that's a fair compromise. I'm not gonna poo poo your faith. Exactly. I'm not saying to denounce their mountain god faith, but yeah. Uh, Paro even at at a point is like, you got you all should leave. Get out of here. You've caused enough trouble. Jesus. Yeah. Paro's savage. He wants nothing to do with these dudes. Probably because Krillin you know, keeps. Five minutes later. Yeah. Until five minutes later, um, <laughs> when Chaozu does the creepy boy stare thing, he says, "There's there's more trouble coming." Like, do something about a Chaozu. I want to see your moves. I want to see your Dodon Ray in action. Yeah, come on. We'll use that hair. Yeah, use the, one of those hairs for something. <laughs> Tickle that fire. Uh, there's a secondary explosion that happens far closer to the village at this point. Mm hmm. Uh, it launches like a giant rock towards the villagers again, but Krillin, Yamcha, and Tien. Like, just punch it real hard to break it up. Yeah. And that's sort of where Paru gets, uh, he gets on their side. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess you are. I guess you are strong. Fine. And there's just a lot of this episode is Krillin half showing off, half getting hurt. Like, because he's got a big swollen red hand. Because, yeah. of course, it was a lava <laughs> rock and it was hot. And he was the only one who punched it. Yamcha and Ten both kicked it. Kick rocks. Can I punch him? Yeah. That's what the fra that's why the phrase is never, hey, why don't you go punch rocks? So yeah. Why don't you go kick rocks? And uh like the last bit is basically like Tien's about to use his Dodon Ray, and yeah, I'm just like, well, you're gonna need some help. And then they combine the Dodon Ray and the Kamehameha wave to blow up a nearby rock structure, cascading. Uh, falling rocks in the perfect path yeah. to redirect the lava <laughs> away from the village. And through plot armor, the village was saved. <laughs> they calculated the perfect angle, amount of force, trajectory, mm -hmm. timing to get all the rubble to make a perfect wall that spelt out, we did this, not your God. <laughs> yeah, spelled, Worship us now. It spelled out, where is your God now? <laughs> <laughs> Parentheses, Crane. <laughs> Wait, no, Crane is ca Crane is canceled. Oh, yeah, we can't. Uh, we can't use that anymore, Aaron. After what know, we saw though? him do in the eighties, Tien didn't know. 
Dan didn't know. Dan is still, you yeah. know, he's he's like, ah, oh, that was my first father. You know what I mean? Gosh. He wasn't perfect, <laughs> but he was my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they just save the village and everyone's happy and Krillin gets to hold hands with Mint and just like he always wanted, he just wanted to hold hands with a pretty blue haired girl. Man, I can't. Vince, I'm real excited because now that this is done, we get to see him go to Korin Tower and like train there, and we get to see Goku finally master his key. Wait a minute, we don't get <laughs> any of that. Yeah, you know, we we get none of that. We this some training episodes we've gotten is really giving me blue fist. Honestly, oh, I mean, my fists are swollen and sore. I just want to punch something right now. I just want to see those boys train and get better, but no, because they're out of the... I, I rewound this. I'm like, wait, what? What are we doing now? Yeah, it's it's like, where do we go from here? Because their whole point for stopping in that village was all was to get answers on where Corrin Tower is. Mm-hmm. They never got that. And the I, like, and to explain, the, the announcer out of the blues like, Hey man, uh, yeah, look at all of them training. Well, anyway, the tournament's next episode. Yeah, pretty much. Although he did it, he did it sneakily. Quote: Oh, these boys—they've really—they're they're gonna grow so much in these three years, and you'll get to see it all at the tournament. But you'll just have to wait three years to see it. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant next episode. Oh, Wink. God. Man, this is no, it's too soon. It's far too soon. Also, I wanted to say that throughout this episode, it seemed like Tien was far weaker than he had been in previous fights and stuff. Like, his Dodon Ray was so powerful. His, um, like, you know, him versus Goku and him versus Piccolo. He seemed like he was miles ahead of Yamcha and Krillin. And now they're all kind of on the same level, which makes me feel weird. Yeah, and it's not like Yamcha somehow... Uh, yeah, you're right. They did. They nerfed him. Yeah, they nerfed. I, it was probably a conceit of this episode that Tien just wanted yeah. to show off his training on how many times he could use the Dodon or something. I don't to know. Ca- to counteract the meta of yeah. this episode, they had to nerf Tien. Everyone was using him. Uh, the game was becoming a little boring, especially in the in the in the ranks. professional league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were watching, um, you know, the streams and the tournaments, the tournament scene was just. All is basically teams of TNs, you know. It was mm-hmm. it was hard to watch, and uh, you know they they had to they had to make the hard choice yeah. for the sake of the meta. Yep, they bumped up Krillin. No, they really bumped up Yamcha. Oh yeah, they basically boosted Yamcha to the point oh, where he they, he's borderline oh. OP if you know how to use him. Oh yeah, the the those Yamcha mains really <laughs> they got real excited about all this. <laughs> they were digging through the patch notes. <laughs> but, I mean, they'll change it up in three years. Yeah, when, they, when the tournament when the tournament begins. Yeah, when real tournament play comes, <laughs> they'll they'll switch it back maybe. Um, uh, Overwatch, I play <laughs> <laughs> again. It's a little frustrating as it is, as we don't get to see at least a sliver of Goku progress. We know he's on the right track. Right. And I guess they're they're trying to make us worried for it a little bit. I am excited to get to the tournament. Oh, me too. I, I am. I I feel like um, we kind of in previous runs run ups to the tournament. There's been enough like really interesting stuff happening to Goku, like he's growing and and all that kind of stuff. And and this was like a little bit too slow for me. And I was you know we we got those blue fists. I got two big blue fists here. I know they're just aching, for, um, aching for a shaking. Yeah, <laughs> aching for a shake. Aching, which is what I call fighting. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the best, this whole bit here, the best has been Mr. Popo and seeing how great he actually is, right? Yes, absolutely. Like, we don't, I, I feel like Popo gets short shrift in Z, but he's also really impressive in Z if you think about some of the things he's, he does, Um Especially he, when you get to the Boo Saga and how he has to train both Goten and Gotenks, Super Saiyans. <laughs> like, yeah. Rowdy Those little Super Saiyans. Fucking, oh, I can't imagine. You, you try to have a daycare 
full of Super Saiyans. Exactly. You got a house full of Sa- Super Saiyans? <laughs> Too many Saiyans. Not <laughs> I, at, a, at the risk of being, you know, uh, discriminatory, but I wouldn't open my Airbnb to a bunch <laughs> of Super Saiyans. No Saiyans allowed. What? <laughs> uh, that's a... It's just a property like a, thing. It's not... <laughs> that's a, uh, look, that's a court case for another day. <laughs> that is a court case for another day. To pull the digital curtain back a little bit, we, 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 this one we recorded pretty much right after the, the, the last one we did, so no, no new mail. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, but look, we still have that sweet, sweet uh, Goku horror trailer up on YouTube and up everywhere else. Please, if you haven't watched it already, please give it a watch. Oh, yeah. And tag, your, you tag your favorite animation studios. Tag Toei. Tag Funimation. Tag them all. Tag everyone. Play tag USC with them. Because the, the best way for the show to grow is for y'all to share it with those you think would be interested. And we appreciate all of you and all the and all the help you got y'all have given us all the love all the help uh thank you all the the content that y'all have generated for mm-hmm, us and mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff again say it all the time but we really mean it because you are the best fans and you're the best part of this podcast and we do this not only for ourselves but you know we we do it for you and um God, we just we just oh, love no. you so much. Vince promised himself he wasn't gonna cry. I promised myself I wasn't gonna cry. You, you made Vince you made Vince break a promise. And, and I I oh I'm crying so hard. Yeah, he's an ugly crier. I'm an ugly crier because I sound ugly when I cry. <laughs> when I cry it's so ugly. Yeah, his dulcet tones leave. They leave me and then I'm just left with all these competing voices of crying. Uh, <laughs> but it's worth it because you fans. Because of you. Being a part of this, making it all worthwhile. And, of course, whether you're trying to hold back tears or overcome your fears, if you're speaking words or trying to, you know, catch a bird, you gotta keep fighting. Yummy, yummy house party!